So how does this apply to Ophelia? How should we approach Ophelia? Carol Neely, uh, a feminist, said, As a feminist critic, I must tell Ophelia's story, which is difficult to do because she only appears in five of the play's 20 scenes. Lee Edwards said, We can imagine Hamlet's story without Ophelia, but Ophelia literally has no story without Hamlet. And what that, of course, means is that Ophelia is very much a secondary character in this play. So for the feminist to tell Ophelia's story is to tell Hamlet's story. How do you isolate those two stories? So Showalter says, Ophelia might confirm the impossibility of representing the feminine in patriarchal discourse as other or anything other than madness, incoherence, fluidity, or silence. And so Showalter is going to draw this comparison here between the female as other, viewed in terms of her sexuality and her ability, connected innately to this idea of madness or incoherence. This is an example in the play um, that speaks to Ophelia being marginalized, viewed as other. Um, this takes place in Act 3, Scene 2. During the play, Hamlet sits next to Ophelia and says, Lady Shaw, I lie in your lap. No, my lord. I mean my head upon your lap. I, my lord. Do you think I meant country matters? I think nothing, my lord. That's a fair thought, to lie between maids' legs. What is, my lord? Nothing, Hamlet says. Showalter tells us that in Elizabethan slang, nothing was a term for the female genitalia, as in Much Ado About Nothing, another play by Shakespeare. To Hamlet, then, nothing is what lies between maids' legs, for in the male visual system of representation and desire, women's sexual organs, in the words of the French psychoanalyst, represent the horror of having nothing to see. When Ophelia is mad, Gertrude says that her speech is nothing, mere unshaped use. Ophelia's speech thus represents the horror of having nothing to say in the public terms defined by the court. Deprived of thought, sexuality, language, Ophelia's story becomes the story of O, the zero, the empty circle or mystery of feminine difference, the cipher of female sexuality to be deciphered by feminist interpretation. This is then the difficulty for Ophelia. She is judged solely by her comparison to Hamlet. Without Hamlet, she is nothing. She has no value. She has no identity. She has no sexuality. She has no personhood. This is a patriarchal system, and Ophelia, as we've seen throughout this play, is very much stuck between the two major men in her life. In her life. And now that these two men are gone, that Hamlet has deserted her, he's in England, but has also spurned her love and said, we'll have no more of marriage. And now that Polonius is dead, without these men, what's going to happen to Ophelia? And, of course, the answer is, for the Elizabethan audience, she'll go insane.